Welcome to Porta Venere in the Cinque Terre, one of the many jewels in the crown of the Ligurian Riviera. Looks pretty amazing from a bird's eye view, doesn't it? A feast for the eyes and for the soul. Seeing things from a different perspective is something we're all getting used to these days. And because we can't meet in person, we're bringing you this presentation of the brand new Adsimut 53 in a virtual format. The advantage is that we can reach out to many more people, but we can also embrace exciting new technologies to make the experience even more compelling and dynamic. For example, we don't have to wait for the boat to reach us here in the harbour of Porto Venere. With a little help from our seagull friend, we can go out to her cruising in the Bay of Poets. See what I mean? Cool boat. But I don't know about you, but I'd like to get just a little bit closer. That was pretty spectacular, wasn't it? So now we've seen the Azimut 53 from up high and the bird's eye view and from down low and the jet surfer's perspective. And either way, she looks pretty spectacular on the water. But that's only half the story, isn't it? Because I know that you want to see her on the inside. No problem, because she's just pulling into the harbor now. So let's go and have a look. Before starting our tour of the yacht in detail, it's worth exploring a little bit more the exterior design by Alberto Mancini, who continues to work with Azimut in redefining the collections. And who better to talk about the exterior lines than Alberto himself, who just happens to be on board with us today. Ciao Alberto. Ciao Justin. The Azimut 53 looks new and different, but it still retains the design DNA that makes Azimut Yacht so instantly recognizable on the water. What are the design solutions that you've introduced to achieve that effect? Tutto nasce da uno schizzo matita, uno schizzo su carta, un'idea, un segno, un simbolo che nonostante tutto l'iter progettuale e il processo di industrializzazione del prodotto rimane ancora oggi qui seduto a bordo con la barca costruita in acqua qualcosa di emozionante e si identifica in questa tensione armonica di linee e grazie a una tecnologia avanzata di scomposizione stampi fornita dal cantiere Azimut ci ha permesso di creare una proporzione perfetta tra scafo, coperta, sovrastruttura e fly. In fact, I noticed the black band around the top of the superstructure that makes the flybridge look as if it's almost floating in mid-air. Abbiamo sfruttato la giunzione tra lo stampo del fly e quello della sovrastruttura per gestire al meglio quella che io chiamo un'architettura orizzontale e quindi un segno continuo, quasi a creare un wrap around, un tutt'uno, creando quasi un fly flottante su quello che invece è la sovrastruttura, dando leggerezza e veramente un aspetto dinamico, pulito e molto bello. While we're on the foredeck, I wanted to show you something which is a hallmark feature of Azimut yachts, and that's the squared-off bow, which creates much more space 
on deck here, so we have room for a wide sun pad for three adults, as well as the forward-facing sofa where I was chatting with Alberto just moments ago. What's more, the whole area can be covered by a bimini supported by four carbon fiber poles. The fly deck on yachts of this size can sometimes seem like a bit of an afterthought, but not on this one. It's spacious, it's comfortable, it's practical. Forward, we have this big sun pad protected by the raked windscreen, which seems to wrap around the helm station so that an owner captain is always in contact with friends and family. Opposite the driving position, we have this teak topped bar and barbecue unit serving the dining area aft. The table itself can be raised and lowered at the touch of a button. Of course, it can be folded out, but it can also be moved sideways for a more comfortable dining experience. There are two shading options, an electric bimini top, which can be kept up at moderate cruising speeds and has integrated LED lighting for dining after dark. Or there's the option of a fiberglass hard top on request. The layout of the aft cockpit is designed to make the most efficient use of space. So both the stairs leading to the fly deck and to the swim platform are on the starboard side, which leaves space for this long teak table and the L-shaped sofa. In the corner, we have this bar cabinet with sink, ice maker, and a nice touch this, two bottle holders to keep the bubbly nice and cold. No fridge, you ask? Good question. But because this glass sliding door recesses completely, Azimuth thought, why not use the fridge in the adjoining galley? Before we leave this part of the boat, in the transom, we have a cosy crew cabin. The cabin itself is comfortable and well appointed, and we even have a window integrated into the transom for natural light. That's enough of the outside. Let's go inside. Remember I mentioned the fridge in the galley? Well, this is it, and it's a full-sized fridge. Of course, we also have the induction hobs, the extractor fan. Under here, we have a dishwasher. On the other side, we have an oven. But the amazing thing about this galley is the amount of space, the storage space. We have it above the cooker. We have it behind me here. We have it above the oven. On the other side, we have a wine cooler next to it. What do we have? More storage. And opposite the helm station, we have a dedicated storage unit just for the glassware. I mean, <laughs> I know they say that you can never have enough storage space on a boat, but this is ridiculous. Before taking a look at the main salon, let's have a quick word with Federico Lantero product marketing director for Azimut, who's followed the project from the very beginning. Ciao Federico. Ciao Justin. Apart from all the storage space that we've seen in the galley, my first impression on coming aboard is of abundant light and space. So what's Azimut's secret? How have you achieved that? You know, Justin, we have decided to deeply investigate the interior levels. And uh, the first decision that we took was uh, to go for the pod propulsion. This has given the possibility to lower the engine, so basically to lower the center of gravity of the yacht. What we achieved is that the main deck here, as you have seen, is amazing. It's quite a unique main deck with just 25 centimeters in height difference between the engines and the full part. Basically, not only we have enhanced the, the space on board, but we have also worked uh, on the perception of space. You know, if you look around, there is an abundance, as you said, an abundance of natural light, really literally a cascade of natural light. And what about on the lower deck? Is there a space advantage to having potted propulsion? Well, on the lower deck, uh, the pod propulsion has another key benefit because uh, it enables uh, to shift aft uh, of almost 60 centimeters. So we are talking about two foot, the engine barhead. So the result is that uh, just imagine almost the majority of the hull is fully dedicated to owners and guest accommodations. And you know, space is uh, really what can make the difference on yachting and the quality of your life on board uh, will be Fantastic, no compromise.
space or the abundance of is clearly one of the main protagonists aboard the Azimut 53. Just look at this wide walkway for example between the table and the sofa. Plenty of room to walk fore and aft without falling over people's feet. The table itself can be raised and lowered again electrically and of course there's more storage under the sofa. And there's the option to have fitted cushions for the table when it's in the lowered position to provide an extra berth just in case a friend decides to stay overnight at the last minute or for creating a chaise long for watching the pop-up TV on the other side. In terms of the interior materials, the joinery throughout is of brushed oak wood which is light and modern but also warm and tactile. It's coupled with bronzed metallic accents, again with a matte finish. In fact, there's no high gloss on board this boat at all, which house pro owners will be pleased to know means fewer fingerprints. Right, now for the fun part. Let's take it for a spin. The boat is powered by twin Volvo Penta IPS 950 drives of 725 horsepower each, for a top speed of 31 knots, but she's done faster, and a cruising speed of up to 27 knots. 2,400 litres of fuel in the tank, providing a cruising range of around 265 nautical miles at 26 knots. The advantages or the benefits of the forward-facing IPS pods are well known. You have more speed, less noise and vibration, better manoeuvrability and fuel economy, and of course, the famous joystick user-friendly controls. The Garmin Electronics are completely integrated into the IPS system with this user-friendly interface, which in terms of aesthetics and functionality to my mind looks a little bit like a smartphone. Azimut's technical team have come up with a hull shape that feels smooth and stable in the water. Turning into the curves, the hull comes to rest on the hard chine and feels solid and reliable. She's not the fastest hull in the Azimut fleet, but she's certainly one of the most well-behaved. Last but not least, the Azimut 53 is fitted with a Seakeeper 9 gyro stabilizer for motion comfort both underway and at anchor. One of the highlights of the Azimut 53 is definitely the owner's suite. It's a midships, of course, to take advantage of the maximum beam of 4.95 meters. But just look at the ceiling heights. I'm 5'11", about 180, but there's still plenty of empty air above my head. The same goes for the floor space. You can walk freely around the bed, even on the starboard side, where the floor is slightly raised, where you have the hard chine. But the ceiling has been raised correspondingly, so you don't have to crouch down to get in and out of bed. There's storage under the bed itself. There's storage inside the bedside cabinet. There's even a walk-in wardrobe, I mean, on a 53-footer. Everything on this boat is where it is for a reason, and not a square centimetre of space is wasted. Here in the lobby, we have a closet for a washer-dryer and a linen store above. Forward, there's a very comfortable VIP cabin. To starboard, we have a twin single, ideal for the kids. And in between, there's a shared bathroom, which also serves as a day head. Yacht owners today are more demanding than they've ever been. They want style and performance, but without compromising on space and comfort. Well, the new Azimut 53 ticks all those boxes. And I, for one, can imagine spending my summer holidays on board instead of renting a seaside villa. Buon vento, as the Italians say.